According to scientific knowledge, in 1962, they came up with a system that they called revolutionary to save lives. They called it CPR. CPR, someone can't breathe anymore. You go with, you give him CPR, you bring him back to life. This is in 1962, and it's approximately 60 years ago, or 50 something years ago. And people call this revolutionary. This was a life changer, and technically it was, if you didn't know it existed. But according to Chazal, in Yalkut Shimoni, in last week's parasha, last week's parasha of the Meraglim, we had the spies go to Canaan, which is later to be called Israel. And what do they say they saw? They saw giants. So giants. Now this Midrash was written nearly 2,000 years ago. This Chazal is telling us that when they saw the giants, the giants also saw them. And they screamed such a loud scream that everyone passed out. Everyone passed out. And then it says, and what they ended up doing is they came up to the Miraglim and they gave them what something they called mouth to mouth in order to breathe back air into their mouth to revive them. I think that's also called CPR. About 200 years ago, they discovered a, a way to revive someone that also lost their breath, needs to get stimulated in order to breathe by putting a tube through their throat. This was again 200 years ago revolutionary. The Bala Tuim, one of the major sages, wrote about 700 years ago. That there were two women written in the Torah in the uh, Sefer Shmot in Exodus. Their job was to deliver the Jewish babies. They had two names, Shifra and Pua. Later on, we find out that that's actually Yochevet and Miriam. So Chazal asks, why do they call it Shifra and Pua? Their names were something different. Shifra comes from the word Shoferet, meaning to breathe in. Why, why, she, why was she called Shifra? Because she would breathe in into still life babies. If a baby was born not breathing, she would give a mouth to mouth. This is even a previous source from the Yalkut Shimoni. This is a Midrash from 3,000 years ago. One of the main things that we find uh, impressive about doctors is that they're able to make surgeries less painful. Until just a few hundred years ago, if you were using secular medicine and you had to have a surgery, whether it's for a broken leg or it's for uh, any type of other uh, issue, most people would actually die from pain. Most people would die from the pain because the best mechanism they had was making the person drunk, which usually is not very good for recovery. But about 200 years ago, they came up with a way that they would give someone a drug which is in essence poison and it would put them to sleep and they would all hope that he would wake up a large percentage of the people would not wake up so now that we discovered anesthesia where they give something in a scientific way in a precise way you go to sleep for an hour two hours ten hours twenty hours they do whatever whatever they have to do for your body you wake up one two three and everything is great so we're very happy about this and we give doctors a lot of money because of this genius wisdom they have. The problem is they didn't discover it. In the Gemara, again the Oral Torah, the Tractate of Baba Metziah, page 83b, Rabbi Eliezer, the son of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the one we celebrate Lag Baomer, that guy everyone, you know, everyone knows Lag Baomer, not everyone knows Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. So Rabbi Eliezer, his son, one day someone called him wicked. He says, you are vinegar coming from wine. Your father, Rabbi Shimon, he's wine, he's tzaddik, but you're vinegar. And the reason why is because Rabbi Eliezer would actually help the Goim by sending all the Jewish criminals to them. If there were Jewish criminals, he would send them to the Goim. Who wants a Jewish criminal? Someone that's hurting other Jews, you have to, you have to arrest them. 
So you would tell on them. And this guy said, what are you telling the Goim about our, our, our nation? Even though they're wicked, you shouldn't say anything. So Rabbi Eliezer was questioning himself. He said, you know what? Maybe, maybe there's something to what he's saying, but I have to check this. Now I know that according to the Torah, someone that's truly righteous, truly righteous, very, very high level, after they get buried, the body doesn't disintegrate. The body doesn't get eaten up by the worms and the maggots and the snakes. And there's proof of this. There's still today you know, when they uncover certain people and they uh, major sages, you're technically not supposed to touch it, but it's actually, it's been done many times already. Where they open the graves of Sadiqim, they see people as if they died five minutes ago. This is, according to science, a scientific impossibility. But it's happened. But he's saying this in the Gemara that was written nearly 2,000 years ago. He says, I have to check this out. So how do I know if I'm going to, if the maggots and the worms are going to eat me? So I'm going to have a surgery. He was a very, very heavy. He was very, very fat, according to the Gemara. And he says, I want you to take out the fat in my body. And then I'm going to put it out in the sun to see what happens to the fat. If the bugs are going to eat it and it becomes smelly and rotten, just like everybody else's fat or everybody else's meat, or even if you put just a piece of steak five minutes outside, there's already maggots coming out of it. He says, I want to see it. So he went under a surgery. We call it today liposuction. But the beauty of it is in the Gemara, Baba Metzia, page 83, it gives you all of the details of what happened in this surgery. And what do they say? They say, we gave him a certain drug to put him to sleep. We call this anesthesia. And what do we give him a surgery on? On a table of granite. Why? Because granite doesn't, doesn't absorb all the germs. We only discovered this again in the last hundred years or so. And he goes through this whole procedure and they take out, a, I think it's two or three buckets worth of fat from his body, which according to today's medicine, you cannot do. Meaning they had more advanced medicine back then than we have today. And then he actually did, the story goes where he did put those buckets outside. No one touched it, no bug touched it. It stayed fresh. But nonetheless, again, all the credit we give doctors, God bless them for helping saving lives, but listen, you gotta give credit to where credit's due. Rabbi Eliezer, he deserves the credit. He's the first one that had anesthesia, not uh, Dr. Williams. Until 1881, approximately 140 years ago, no one really thought that flies, the little annoying bug, really do anything. They just thought, listen, it's just an annoying little bug. But in 1881, scientists realized the flies actually transfer disease. And so do mosquitoes. They transfer disease. Until then, when the Jews told them, listen, we have a Gemara, a Masechet Ketubot, page 77b, Rabbi Yochanan says, be careful of flies, of Baal Ra'atan, that will transfer disease. Baal Ra'atan was a certain type of disease. He says that disease is transferred to flies. Gemara, almost 2,000 years ago. So why didn't they read the Gemara? Oh, it's not popular anymore. So we had to wait for them 2,000 years to realize what we already have. One of the main things that's used in a lot of medicine today is silver. Silver is used in medicine in order to heal wounds. Now, this again, only discovered in recent generation, but the Mishnah, which is actually 2,500 years ago, writes in Masichet Shabbat, Tractate of Shabbat, page 65a, says one is allowed to put a silver coin on an open wound on Shabbat because it's healing. So even though technically you're not supposed to touch coin, not allowed to touch uh, money on Shabbat, he says on Shabbat you're allowed to touch the silver coin if you're going to put it on a wound because it's for medicine. 
And in those days, if you continued bleeding, if you didn't, you didn't stop it right away, you would die. So it's considered pikuach nefesh. In today's world, obviously it's not. But nonetheless, it says it's specifically telling us that this silver has healing power. Also, there's something called opakinon. It's very good for, uh, for, for the ladies. Why? Chazal figured out that instead of going to the spa, spending two, three hundred dollars to get different hair removed and your skin better and all the things that women do, all you have to do is use opakinon. What's opakinon? It's an olive. Olive that's crushed and turns into oil and they would rub it onto the skin. But it's not just any olive. They have to wait specifically until the olive is a third of its normal growth. As soon as a third of its normal growth, they have to crush it and that's what they use the oil from. So they knew exactly, precisely when it's a third. And they would use that to remove hair from the body of women and make them pretty, make them shiny and all the things that, unfortunately, ladies, you spend at least, at least a few thousand dollars a month on. You can get it for free if you learn the Gemara. One of the major things that people discovered just in a recent generation is that wine is good for the heart. But this you actually can find in both Masechet Brachot and as well as Masechet Abu Dazara and several other places in the Gemara that it specifically talks about the difference between wine and beer. It says beer is terrible for the heart, but wine is very good for the heart. So they also knew exactly what's good for the heart. They knew a lot of the things that we again just discovered recently. Now one of the things that people are usually inspired by is astronomers and people that talk about the stars and the galaxies and millions and millions of years and they tell you that dinosaurs were around here you know 65 million years ago and some people say that they were around 2 billion years ago usually the guy with the most amount of years gets the biggest grant from the government so it, pay, it pays for them to put more years if they start telling you, listen, the world's only been around for 6,000 years, they don't get any, any more grants. But one of the things they don't teach you is that these very same scientists that look into the, uh, into the universe and look into the galaxy also have one statistic they don't usually share with most people. is that every galaxy, according to their, their knowledge, this is secular knowledge, every galaxy has an exploding star happen at least once every 26 years. Once every 26 years. And this is usually, this is one of the ways that they can figure out how old a galaxy is. You see these things, the remainings of the, of the star for many, many years. So if you see the remainings of 10 explosions, that means that this galaxy is approximately 260 years old. One of the things that they don't tell you is that in our own galaxy, scientists are estimating that there was less than 250 explosions, which if you do the math, that makes the world somewhere in the neighborhood of 6,000 years old. which is very, very close to what Ami Sayal has been saying for 6,000 years. Another thing that they don't tell you is that NASA has spent close to uh, $900 billion on different programs to discover different things in the, in a, you know, for the stars, for the galaxy, for the sun. 
One of the things that they've tried to uh, identify is exactly how many stars we have in the universe. In 1994, NASA came out, connected a supercomputer to a very high-end telescope, and they did a calculation, an estimate, of how many stars they have in the universe. According to their estimate, there's 10 to the 20th power. 10 with 20 zeros after it, approximately, in stars. In the year 2004, 10 years later, a university in Australia came out with a little bit of a smaller number, and they said, no, it's not 10 to the uh, 20th power, it's actually 10 to the 18th power. Now, they could have saved all this money. Because on Gemara, Masechet Brachot, page 32, we have the exact number. Now most people, when they read this Gemara, they don't usually think about stars. So I'll read this Gemara to you, and you tell me what you think. The story goes where after Am Yisrael suffered from having the destruction of the Bet HaMikdash, they screamed to Hashem, and they said to Hashem, Hashem, even a um, husband that divorces his wife, still if you ask him years later, do you remember the wife that you divorced? He says, yeah, I remember her. But you have destroyed our house, you destroyed your house, and we feel like you've left us. That's what Ami Sa'ed says. The fact that it was their fault for the destruction, they're not mentioning. Similar to us today. We always complain to Hashem, but we don't look at ourselves in the mirror. Oh, listen, why would Hashem give me anything good if I'm not keeping Shabbat, I'm not keeping Tarat Mishpacha, I'm not keeping Kosher, I'm not keeping any laws. The last, the last law that I kept was I gave a dollar to a homeless guy. The one before that is I went to Beknesset once last year. So, we have to give Hashem a reason. So, here in the Gemara, Hashem answered them. They had more merits than we do. Amar la Kadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed is He, responded to her. Meaning He's calling Am Yisrael his daughter. Biti, my daughter. Twelve constellations that I create in the firmament. And above each and every constellation I created thirty army commanders. And about each and every army commander I created thirty legion. And about each and every legion I created thirty raton. And about each and every raton I created thirty karaton. And about each and every karaton I created thirty gastara. And about each and every gastara I suspended in the firmament, meaning in the sky. I'll explain all of this in a second. I suspended in the firmament 300 and uh, 3.65 million stars, corresponding to the days of the solar year, and all of them I created only for your sake. And you say that you've forsaken me and you've forgotten me? It says I created all of this for you. All of these stars. But before it gives you 3.65 million stars, which the actual number in the Gemara is 365,000 times 10,000. So before it gives you this number, it gives you all these weird words and is 12 times 30, times 30, times 30, times 30, times 30, and you get to the 3.65 million. So what is this? Chazal says this is actually the exact number of stars. It's a calculation of how to get to it. The 12 is the 12 parts of the universe. This is what we call the mazal. Or the, uh, you know, the, we have the, uh, everyone has a sign. The zodiac constellation. So 12 constellations. And then he says each one of these constellations has 30 parts. And each one of those 30 parts has another 30 parts. And he gives them a name. And each one of those 30 parts has 30 parts. And in essence, each one of these has, is a number of stars. And the calculation goes 12 times 30 times 30 times 30 times 30 times 3.65 million. And then you get a number. And the number is 1064340, and then it's 12 zeros. The number is approximately 10 to the 18th power. So finally, they caught up to us. Finally, they caught up to the Gemara in Masechet Berhot, page 32. They could have saved all this money, maybe give some staka. We live and learn. They wouldn't get the grant, Chazak that's what it is.